Three years in the making and 30 years of envisioning and planning, and the new Central Library is finally open. Hello, I'm Dennis Morgino, and this is the San Diego Library's Next Chapter. We are standing in the grand lobby of San Diego's new Central Library, the Joan and Irwin Jacobs Common. nine stories tall, half a million square feet. With the charter school on the sixth and seventh floors, two levels of parking, an auditorium, and a cafe. When people walk into the library, they're going to find an inspiring atmosphere for learning. They're going to find a deep and very rich collection. They will find the latest technology, knowledgeable staff, and also they will find a wonderful place to meet their neighbors, to talk about issues, they will have an experience that will be extraordinary. In downtown's East Village, near Petco Park, you know right away it's not just another building. Nothing makes that point more eloquently than the dome that has forever changed the San Diego skyline. The dome is intended to be an icon or a, a really a symbol of this city's commitment to learning, to literature, and to the future of our children. Like the sort of human spirits within the building, it's intended to be in the act of becoming. So it doesn't look finished. It never will look finished. It's always becoming something greater than it is right now, just like the people in the library researching and, and learning. Actually larger than the dome on the U.S. Capitol building, slightly smaller than St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, it's a one-of-a-kind engineering marvel. Constructed in Arizona, it was brought here and assembled as two huge cranes lifted the sections into place. The sails that define it weigh an average of 17 tons each. The tallest one is 113 feet. The sunshades that cover the sails are made up of 1,500 panels, 32,000 pounds of aluminum. We can talk for days about how much concrete and glass and how many nuts and bolts it took to turn this idea into a reality. For Turner uh, to be chosen for this project was um, nothing short of an honor. We recognized that uh, this building had so much purpose and value uh, for this community. And for us to have the opportunity to be a part of such an iconic project um, was just a tremendous honor. Walk up from along the trolley line. Enter the East Arcade with its library book-shaped windows and get a glimpse of the reading nooks inside the library. That brings us back here to the courtyard with the auditorium on one end and the library on the other. Glass walls that open completely to create a space for outdoor concerts, author talks, and brown bag seminars. It takes more than a building to make a library. It's what it offers the community and what happens to you from being there that matters. I've learned that it doesn't matter what, what your education is, you can always find, um, help your children to always have a better education. And that's, the library is a great beginning for that. Projects this grand don't just happen overnight. It took years, and it took planning and dedication from people all over the city. Commitment from avid library users, the library commission and foundation, the friends of the library, donors and civic partners, and then a final okay from the city council on July 28, 2010. We've talked about this and dreamt about this for so long. 
It's amazing to think that this dream is almost a reality. We have a motion and a vote. Please vote. Clerk, please call the roll. And that passes six to two. It's a $185 million dream that has come true with funds from a unique public-private partnership that included the State Library, Center City Development, San Diego Schools, and private donors large and small who have raised $75 million for construction and the first five years of operation. We are grateful to all the donors who showed their passion for the library, from those supporting major areas to those who inscribed their library message on a brick. And we are taking a high-tech approach to recognizing these gifts here in the lobby. We are also grateful to other partners, including Bank of America and Merrill Lynch, who worked with the Workforce Partnership to create a workforce center that will offer on-site job assistance, classes, and resume writing. The library is so perfectly fit to its surroundings, it is sometimes hard to imagine that it's not always been here. This site, in my opinion, was, was an ideal site for the library for a number of reasons. One is public transportation is so immediate. It's, of all the sites, it's the most accessible from the freeway. Nowhere are the views more stunning than from the ninth floor, the Phyllis Epstein Bayview Terrace, with views not just of the bay, but from the Coronado Bridge to the hills of East County. The adjacent special events room is a three-quarter glass surrounded space with a multimedia projection system and a catering kitchen. It's a great destination for any group looking to have cocktails, dinner, or a wedding at the top of the city. And the ninth floor dome terrace takes full advantage of the weather and the views. Just behind you, an oasis in the sky, the ivy-colored Valera Sculpture Garden. Inspired by the rooftop garden at New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. The adjacent art gallery provides a chance to appreciate San Diego area artists and a large new home to the library's acclaimed visual arts program. The ninth floor is also home to the Marilyn and Jean Marks San Diego Heritage Center. It includes historical items unique to San Diego and California and holds the Genealogical Society's collection, the largest in the region. The Hervey family rare book room is also here. Designed to look like a 19th century living room, it holds many of the great treasures of San Diego's library. Books, of course, will be anything but rare in this building. If you're counting, there are 1,222,782 books, CDs, DVDs, and e-books. It is a library, after all. And then there are 1.6 million government documents. Almost two-thirds of that whole collection that you can now browse was off-limits to the public at the old Central Library. The three-story high reading room may be the first place many library users will go. And it's a sure bet you will come back again and again. Just under the dome, you might say it's the penthouse of the library, where people can relax and read, provided they aren't distracted by the magnificent views of the skyline and the bay. Not all the scenery is on the outside. Be sure to take a look at the special reading room furniture Internationally renowned artist Roy McMakin created 25 bright blue tables and chairs placed throughout the reading room. These functional works of art contribute to the inviting atmosphere in the new library. We have art displayed throughout the building and it's pretty phenomenal, I would say. I think what we're doing is really reaching toward the human endeavor of looking at knowledge, 
and the arts and blending the two together because it is about the human experience and art does express that. Remember going to the library as a kid and the worlds that opened up when you picked up a book? I sure do. And here at the Sanford Children's Library on the first floor, those worlds will come alive for countless young minds. It's a library within a library with a Dr. Seuss theme, where a person's a person no matter how small. Dr. Seuss books will be among the works loaded on the tablets in the children's library. No one learns technology faster than young kids, and the early literacy stations in the children's library will take advantage of that. With dozens of educational software programs for kids from two to eight years old, and lots of computers of all sizes, and space for programs, story time, crafts, music, games, and reading programs. One flight up and overlooking the lobby is Teen Space. Designed by kids for kids, it has a beach theme. This is where education meets recreation, from the multimedia gaming room where you can collaborate on projects, to the refreshment bar, to the Tiki Hut reference desk. Speaking of teenagers, anybody can have a library in a school. This central library is the first major municipal library in the nation to have a high school in a library. Housed on the sixth and seventh floors, E3 Civic High will ultimately have 500 students. That's E3, engage, educate, empower. What's amazing about that is that this is a nine-story library with more than one million resources. Um, we have an access to the librarians as our instructors for research. We have access to the homework center, the teen center, the children's library, the museum. We'll have an assembly later in the auditorium that seats more than 280 students with amazing acoustics, with amazing audio. We have access to the special events room for our prom and our dances and our performances. We have access to an amazing facility that's like a college campus. And so we're very, very fortunate to be in this facility. It is so wonderful for the Central Library and E3 Civic High to be in the same location. I, I would say that it's an experiment, but in a way it isn't. It's something that we've all known, which is that libraries support education. And students who have access to information are more successful than others. We have a dedicated Union Bank Homework Center staffed by volunteer tutors who can assist the students after school and on weekends. Do you know about the Society of American Baseball Research? Do you know that San Diego's downtown library is the best collection of baseball facts and artifacts outside of the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown? Thousands of books, films, songs, movies, and memorabilia right next to the reading room. You can pour over the minutia of baseball statistics to your heart's content. And what baseball fan could resist? Along with more than a million books, this library has hundreds of digital devices. Kindles and e-readers already loaded with the most popular titles. Chromebooks and iPads and iPad minis. Add to that free Wi-Fi throughout the building, the courtyard and auditorium, computer workstations and more than 30 study rooms where people can work alone or together and use state-of-the-art computer-ready televisions. In fact, the fourth floor is the Qualcomm technology floor. The computer lab is not only open for computer users, but it's a classroom to teach people how to use computers, from basic skills to specialized software. For people with disabilities, the ICANN Center on the first floor has dedicated services, programs, and expertise. These include audiobooks, assistive technology workstations, video magnifiers, and more. We have wonderful people in San Diego who stuck through the San Diego Central Library project for many years. It got here through perseverance and through generosity. 
many people provided their heart and soul to this project for a long time. And I think it's one of the things that San Diegans will be most proud of, that we brought together public, private, and other government agencies to pull together a project that benefits everyone. I would really love to express my personal deep felt thanks to many people who helped make this project happen. Our library staff and our community thanks them as well. Thank you. 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 From start to finish, from top to bottom, the Central Library is a triumph of dedication, hope, and belief. Come discover your next chapter at the library.